Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is Societal Narcissism. This video is sponsored by contribution from Eric. Eric gave a general contribution, which I'll use on this video. So, not all boomers, but it's a lot of them. Boomers are self centered, they're selfish, and they are about themselves. A lot of boomers. They like the idea of calling themselves grandparents, showing off the grandkids for quick accolades, and then they want nothing to do with them. What we have here is probably one of the most tragic stories I've ever seen in my life. Let's just get right into it, shall we? Wachula, Florida, a small town along Main Street in Hardy County. Population less than 5,000. Kayla Nix and Drew Schock grew up here and reconnected five years ago after what began as a high school friendship. They soon decided to have kids and raise their children where they had roots. Now, this was the plan. We were going to have three kids. And that, you know what I mean? That was, that was our goal. My mom was a principal. Kayla's mom, Tracy Nix, now at the center of... Her mother was a principal responsible for children their family's story here we are a story they're here to share it is really difficult to know that my mom is the one you know that broke his heart you know my mom my mom according to the complaint affidavit on november 1st 2022 kayla was going to get her hair done and asked her mom to babysit tracy met friends for lunch drove home and forgot her granddaughter in the back seat of her 2019 Lexus with the windows rolled up. She went inside, talked to her dog, and practiced the piano. When one of her grandsons arrived, all of a sudden it came across her head that Uriel was in the back seat all afternoon. Her husband immediately began CPR. Temperatures in Wachula that day reached 90 degrees. Uriel died. She was seven months old. To see to go in, you play with your dog, you go play the piano, which means you're in a mindset of, she took out, she went out with the seven month old granddaughter, showed her off, got her supply, then completely just forgot she was in, in the car. Parks the car, plays with her dog, and starts playing the piano until she sees another grandchild and be like, uh-oh, that's right. Think of the last moments of her life as a mother yeah. is gut-wrenching. A little girl. How do you forget a little girl? After identifying his daughter at the hospital, Drew remembers. We were out in the parking lot just trying to grasp out what just happened. And that it actually just happened twice in our lifetime. Twice in less than a year. 16-month-old Ezra, Uriel's brother, also died while under his grandmother Tracy's care. Two grandchildren, two infant grandchildren in less than a year died in this woman's care. Now, after that, that and it turns out the little girl is the second. Why you would leave your daughter with her after that is, is beyond me. Is be is just is just mind blowing to me. Nine one one, where is your emergency? Uh, it's a little baby. Uh, the grandmother is out giving him CP. Is he breathing? No, no, no. no. Okay, it was a pond. Yeah. And they're not sure how long the child was in the pond. No. Drew got the first call three days before Christmas, twenty twenty one. He goes, something happened to Ezra, and. That's what I just, uh, that's what I just called Kayla. And she goes, what? And I said, I don't know. I'm heading there now. I could see the helicopter landing and I didn't look when they, when, when there was a stop sign. I was in a full head on like collision. And I was going 85 miles an hour in that case, six months pregnant. But I got out <laughs> and started running to my parents' house. And at this point, I don't have shoes. I'm just running. That was my desperation to get to my son. Kayla says her doctor told her she needed to make a choice. 
they withheld information from me. Any information that would work me up or make me emotionally distressful would be harmful to my unborn child. And I knew in that moment that as much as I loved him, that she was a real life and she was coming and it would be wrong of me to lose it over him and hurt her and take her. Kayla and Drew had never seen the incident report detailing how Ezra drowned in a nearby pond the afternoon his grand. I understand the, the mother not looking at it because she's six months pregnant. I don't understand the father not looking at it. <clears throat> I don't understand how the father allows the second child to be left in this woman's care. I don't. Grandmother fell asleep. In the report that she fell asleep. So again, all about her. All about her. This woman was a principal responsible for the safety of other people's children, yet she couldn't care less to stay alert for her own grandchildren. Detective wrote a complaint affidavit for child neglect will be forwarded to the state attorney's office for further review. I didn't know that they had ever attempted to file charges. Kayla says she will never forget what a deputy told her. I was told that unless I believed that my mom held my son's head under the water and intentionally killed him, that there is nothing else that they can do about my son's death. In a statement, the state... So she wanted some kind of retribution. She wanted justice for the first child. So why are you leaving? Why would you give her a second chance? Not even a year later. Not even a year later so you can get your hair done. Oh, no, I wouldn't take... I wouldn't be taking that kind of risk so I could get my hair done. I just wouldn't. The attorney's office said in cases involving the accidental drowning of a toddler, Florida appellate courts have stated that a one-time lapse of judgment would not establish culpable negligence of the caretaker. His story has... And I could understand that, like lapse in judgment, you forget. Like It's a hard thing to forget. It really is. But I understand in a court of law, them looking at like, it's going to be really, really hard to prove, especially for a grandparent. It's gotten lost in hers. After the death of Ezra. your son, mm -hmm. did you trust your mom? No. Uh, no, we didn't trust her at all. Like, so that's why we never let Asher go over there. Happy birthday! Asher, their now four-year-old firstborn. We were anxious, but I loved my mother, and I am a daughter that wanted her mom. I thought that if I could believe in second chances, and so when, when I was told that Ezra's death was an accident, some sliver child part of me thought, okay, could I get to keep this mom, this grandmother, this person? Three months after Ezra's death. I couldn't. I mean, I just couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't forgive after something like that. Ayla gave birth to their baby girl. There wasn't a moment to get a grip of, of the death of my son before there was the life of my daughter. And how beautiful is that? Her name is Uriel and it means, it's a Hebrew name and it means God is my light. He's so cute. Kayla and Drew were protective. The very, very minor amount of time that she saw my daughter was almost always supervised. On her daughter's last day, Kayla says she knew her mom's plans. Yuri was at a restaurant with other people that I knew and trusted. With showing her off, getting her supply as a grandmother, showing off her grandchild, and then as soon as she gets home, ah, I got my supply out of sight, out of mind. I'm gonna go play piano. Within hours, someone from the sheriff's office showed up at her home. And said that your baby is dead. And I said, I'm sorry, what? I know what's was said. Why are you here? Why are you, like, what, what is this? No, no, Kayla, your baby is dead. Two children now who are no longer here. You know I mean? Somebody has to answer for that. But Tracy's attorney, William Fletcher, says it depends. Because somebody <sighs> dies doesn't necessarily mean that somebody has to pay. I don't even know what the fuck that means. Listen, everybody's entitled to an offense, to a defense. But I don't know how you fucking make a statement like that that is just sick. 
And what is that on top of your head, dude? Honestly, what is that on top of your head? Let it go, Boomer. Let the hair go. It ain't there. And this obviously was an accident. And the question was, is it culpable negligence? Fletcher told us Tracy Nix will not be making any public statements. Tracy loves her daughter and her son-in-law and all of her children and her grandchildren. What is she feeling? Totally devastated. Totally devastated. Why did you choose to take on this case? Uh, Money. Money. It was so incredible. I can't conceive of the pain. I, I got a couple grandkids. And you feel the same way about your grandkids, so it's not, you know, the parents are hurting, but so are the grandkids. If she felt the same way about her grandkids, two of them wouldn't be dead. She wouldn't have neglected one, fell asleep so you so can drown in a pond, and then left the second one for hours in a car to be, to be basically be baked to death. After showing her off to get supply, I mean, I... And again, to the mother, how do you leave, how do you take this risk? How do you take this risk so you can go get your hair done? Honestly, like... The grandparents are hurting, too. Who so cares they're... about what the grandparents are at this point? They're responsible for two of their grandchildren's death. Two! No winners here, certainly no winners. Everybody, it's just... Who said there were any winners? Who said there were any winners? Station. They're very fine people. Um, and decided I'd take it. I know you've heard sometimes people have been struck by lightning two different times. And that's the way I look at this. This isn't a lightning. This isn't something that she had no control over. You get struck by lightning, you, you have no control over that, unless you're standing under a tree or something, or holding some, something conductive to electricity, then you might bear a little bit more responsibility. But it has no comparison to being struck by lightning twice. None. Case. We sat down and spoke with Kayla and Drew, the parents, and they say that they want justice in this case. What do you think justice looks like here? Um, looking at the facts, looking at what, what really happened, as far as um, Uriel, the, the baby girl, which is what the charge should, what the jury should be focused on and deciding is this culpable negligence. Fletcher says if found guilty, Tracy could be sentenced to between 12 and 30 years in prison. So then if I'm objective, she needs to go to prison. As her daughter kills me to say it, as their mother, I demand it. I want justice for my son, so that way I don't let what happened to my son happen with my daughter and her just get scot free because I couldn't live with that as a parent. We asked what they would want Ezra and Uriel to know. That, we're, that we love them and that we're sorry, because they were beautiful children and they were taken by somebody that we believed was worthy of trust. The pretrial hearing is scheduled for March 28th in Hardy County with photojournalist Randy Wright and my team investing. I don't know how you think there were. I can understand the for maybe the first time, the second time. I don't know how you think that they're worthy of trust. Now watch this story we brought you last month that grabbed viewers attention worldwide. It's the story of a grandmother whose two grandchildren died 11 months apart while under her watch. We spoke exclusively with the daughter and son-in-law of that grandmother who told us they just want justice for their children. Many of you reaching out to us asking how this could have happened. Well, today that grandmother was in court in Hardy County. Her lawyer seeking to have Tracy Nix get treatment at a mental health facility. I team reporter Kylie McGivern just stepped out of that hearing with what the judge decided. The judge granted a motion to allow Tracy Nix to go to an inpatient mental health facility outside of Hardy County. And Why? Why? See, this is boomer privilege right here. Why would you allow, allow this? St. Cloud, Florida. Her husband of 41 years, Nay Nix, spoke in court, saying his wife hasn't talked about what happened after she forgot their seven-month-old granddaughter, Uriel, in the back seat of the car in November. How dare you not talk? How dare you withhold information? How dare you? I would just like to see her get help. 
I would like to see her come back to whatever normal will be. Throughout the hearing, their daughter, Kayla, Uriel's mother, looked on in tears. Tracy's attorney said his client was having great difficulty discussing what happened not only with her husband, but with her attorneys, making it difficult to prepare for trial. The of course she is. She knows what she's doing. She knows what she's doing here. She's playing a game. She's playing a game and the system is letting her get away with it. The plan is for Tracy to be admitted to the Blackberry Center for inpatient treatment on April 28th. She will be there for 30 days. The judge's concern was that she could check herself out at any time, but pretrial release agreed to call the treatment center every day, including on weekends, to make sure she is still there. Tracy did not speak and kept her head down in court. At the end, Kayla went up to her mom, who she has not spoken with since her mother was charged in her daughter's death, and hugged her, crying. She then went up to her father and hugged him as well. I re He's just as responsible. He's just as responsible, the father. She out to Kayla after the hearing, and she said while the hug to her mom may have looked like a hug of support, she said it was really hugging her, saying I love you, and saying goodbye. Kayla said that for her, this is goodbye. The next pretrial hearing is scheduled for June 22nd. In Hardy County, I'm Kylie McGivern, ABC Action News. Just disgusting. Just disgusting. Joining us here, everyone, at 530, I'm Paul Legron. The radar lit up tonight. Dennis is here tracking the storms and the timing of it all. But first up here tonight, we have an update to a local story that made national headlines. A Hardy County grandmother now facing criminal charges after two of her grandchildren died under her care. 16-month-old Ezra drowning in 2021 and seven-month-old Uriel dying last year left in the back seat of her grandmother's car. And all new here tonight, I-Team investigator Kyla McGivern joining us right now in the studio with new reporting in this case. Kylie, that grandmother now charged with aggravated manslaughter in her own granddaughter's death. As she should be. As she should be, 100%. Yes, Paul. Now to bring you up to speed, the last time we checked in with you all was at the end of April when a Hardy County judge granted a motion to allow 66 year old Tracy Nix to go to an inpatient mental health facility outside of the county in St. Cloud, Florida. Today's hearing was all about whether to extend her 30 day stay. The judge said the Blackberry Center wrote a letter to the court asking for more time. In that letter, they asked for an additional week of treatment for her. What is a week going to give you? Like, what is a week going to give you? Throw her in jail. Oh, that she otherwise is doing well. The state had no objection as long as Tracy Nix continues daily check-ins with the court. Nix joined the hearing remotely, sitting next to her therapist. Therapist. How come, how come the therapist and her have the same dead eyes? Have the same SSRI eyes? How is that possible? I mean, every day is crucial, I think. Um, I'm, I'm in and out during the week, so I just wanted to make sure she gets the, you know, the, be the maximum enough time for her, for her benefit. The judge granted the extension as Nix's daughter, Kayla, the children's mother, hugged her father and walked out of the courtroom. Daughter's withdrawn from the father too. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Husband's not even there anymore because I, 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 he's got to feel like complete shit. So where do we go from here? The next pretrial hearing is scheduled for June 22nd. And to see our full report, just go to the I-Team section of abcactionnews.com. With photojournalist Randy Wright, I'm I team investigator Kylie McGivern taking action for you. Kylie. Now, do I think that this grandmother did this deliberately? No. No. <clears throat> but it's boomer, it's, it's boomer selfishness that led to this. I don't even know how you trust yourself. If there's something like that, if you fuck up like that, I don't even know how you ask or even want the responsibility of watching another one of your grandchildren, infant grandchildren. But, you know, she wanted to show off the kid and get her supply. And what she ended up getting was a second dead grandchild. Completely sad situation. So I'm going to leave it there.
Thank you, Eric, for the contribution. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read right on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, something you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up a Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful, because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with either the Cash App, Zelle, PayPal, and email link in the description box below also please like and share this video wherever you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads also be sure to subscribe to both my channels on rumble follow me on twitter and telegram as well i'm ollie matthews this has been societal narcissism take care everyone